everyone and welcome to my live creative time today. My name is Mandy Witherby from Mandy's Papercraft Creations and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in Sydney, Australia. Thank you for joining me. It is great to have you here. I have got um, some cute pro uh, products to play with you t t today. Um, to play with, with you. <laughs> to create with, with you today. Um, so yeah, I hope that you enjoy this today. Um, so while we are waiting for everybody to jump on, let me just bring this up on my other devices so that I can see everybody's comments there. Okay, so let's just refresh this one and turn that volume down. There we go. And this one over here. I don't know why I bother with the um, computer because half the time it just goes blank anyway. But we'll see how we go today. Oh, now it's on. What is it on? What's it doing? Oh, there we go. Mute that. Okay. Bring that up. Okay, good. All right, it's on for now. So we'll see how we go. <laughs> I think I've got my camera a little bit crooked today. Let's see if we can, can straighten that up. Okay, today is, oh my goodness, the 11th of December. Christmas is exactly two weeks today. So can you believe that? <laughs> I don't know where the year has gone and I know I've said that a lot this year because I just feel like this year has absolutely flown by. Do you feel the same? Yeah it's really crazy. So I have got getting closer to Christmas I thought it's time to start wearing my Christmas brooch so I've got my little here he is my little fox in a teacup here. So this is my little Christmas fox in a teacup. Isn't he just so cute? He's adorable and I've got my little Christmas teacup earrings as well. So they coordinate with him. And um, yes, so just a bit of fun. I was going to put my Christmas headband on today too. But then at the last minute, I forgot. So maybe I'll wear it next week. Alrighty. So there are some exciting things that are happening and exciting things that are coming up. Aside from Christmas, because that's always exciting. Now currently, um, we've got uh, the September to December 2023 mini catalog, which is retiring. So you've probably heard me talk about this one. Um, so it is retiring. It's going to be gone very, very soon. Um, and so there is the last chance products promotion at the moment. And there are some products that are reduced up to 60%. So you can find them in my online store. So if you go to my online store and you'll see a promotion coming up saying last chance, if you click on that, it'll take you to all of those products from the mini catalog that are retiring. Now there are some products, there's a few products that are carrying over and some that are currently bundles, but they're carrying over as individual products. So if you had them on your wish list or you love them and you'd like to get them, um, I encourage you to order them now before they retire as a bundle because once they carry over, you'll no longer get that 10% discount from them. Um, they will be individual, individually priced items. So um, check those out. Make sure that you're checking for um, those bundles as well. Um, yeah, and see if there are some of the products that you had on your wish list that are reduced in price as well, because you can grab those at a bargain right now. Um, now, uh, I don't know where I'm going to put all this today. Oh, I've got a spot down there. I've got so much going on on the desk today. Um, I'm glad that you can't see it. <laughs> Uh, so because that catalogue is retiring, it is actually making way for the new mini catalogue, which is coming out in January. And um, as demonstrators, we can order from this already. So if you don't want to wait until January, then um, you can get your hands on those right now when you join Stampin' Up! So if that's something that you might be interested in, then let me know because you can pop the items from this catalogue into your starter kit when you join which is super exciting and um, then from that point on you'll get 20% discount on all of your Stampin' Up! products which is awesome so if you'd like to get a hold of some of those now 
um, then consider joining. So the starter kit is $169, but you get to choose $235 of product of your choice to put in that starter kit. So you can make that up however you like um, from whatever of the current products are available that you can pop in your starter kit. Um, so that's really exciting. And as I said, then you'll get your 20% discount. And that 20% discount that you're going to get once you've joined is on top of any other sale or promotion as well. So um, it's an added discount on anything that might already be discounted. So that's really great, it's a great saving. Now, not only that, um, so if you do have um, questions about joining, then please feel free to ask me. Um, there's no need to sell product. You don't have to hold classes or anything like that. You can simply enjoy the discount uh, for yourself for as long as you like. You're free to um, leave at any time or you can stay as long as you like as well. We're always happy to um, have our hobby, happy shoppers join with us and uh, enjoy the crafting community with us as well. We have a lovely team of beautiful people and um, we love crafting together and inspiring each other with our projects and, uh, and just having a lot of fun. And it's nice to be in a community of other people that get it <laughs> about your crafting because if you're chatting to people who don't craft, then um, yeah, they sort of don't have that passion like we do about our crafting. So it's really lovely to be able to share that with others. Now, the other thing, so feel free to ask me more, uh, more questions about that if you have them. Now, the other thing that is happening in January is Celebration. Now, Celebration and the mini catalog, they are both gonna launch on the 4th of January, okay? So they will about be available from then. Um, and with celebration, that is how when you can earn free products with qualifying orders of $90 or $180 or basically multiples of $90. So with every $90, you can, you can choose another free item from the celebration brochure. Now, I can't show you the inside yet until it launches on the 4th of January. Same with the mini catalog. Can't show you the inside yet, can only show you the beautiful covers. But it'll give you a little idea, if you have a close look there, it'll give you a bit of an idea of some of the products that are going to be available. Now, my customers um, that have shopped with me in the last 12 months, I have already ordered you a copy and they should be um, going out soon. So you should be starting to receive those very soon. So please let me know when you receive yours. Now, if you're here in Australia and you don't already have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, but you would like a copy of these catalogues, then please get in contact with me and let me know, and I would love to send them out to you. Um, if you are a previous customer and you haven't shopped with me for a while or you're unsure if you're going to be receiving a catalogue, then also please get in contact with me and I can check if you were on my list or if you would like to be added back into the list um, I can do that as well. Now I do have a link for the catalog, so I will pop that up in the comments right now. Um, and then all of my links will be here in the description of the video, both here on Facebook and on YouTube. Thank you to all of you watching over on YouTube as well. Um, so you can get all of my links for everything I mentioned today over there. Um, oh well, on both platforms, but in those links when I put them up. Now let me just grab, um, not that one, um, just grab here the um, catalog, yeah. So the mini catalog and celebration brochure uh, request form, and I'll put that in the comments. Here we go, sorry, <laughs> I'm thinking, I'm trying to think, I'm trying to process, the brain's a bit slow today. There we go. I didn't get much sleep last night and I tried to go back to sleep and I laid awake for two and a half hours trying to get back to sleep. And then eventually got back to sleep and have, was having really weird dreams. And then when I woke up, I felt more tired than I had previously when I was laying awake after not much sleep. So I don't know, very weird, very weird my sleep patterns. <laughs> so yeah, so if I'm a bit all over the place today, that is why, because I'm tired. Um, but I didn't want to miss coming live with you all. So, oh, my screen over here has gone blank again. Let's do a refresh and see if we can bring it back up. 
always does that. I don't know why it does. It's only when I'm watching my live as I'm filming it, because when I if I watch it back after I've finished filming it, it's fine. So it's only while it's filming. So I don't know, maybe because I've got the three devices running and it just can't keep up. I don't know. Anyway, beautiful, beautiful products in here. As you can see, I've already started my wish list. Now, I do already have some of those products. I've, I have bought just a few to get me started, um, but I haven't played with any of them just yet. I thought we'd have an, a play this week with something that is current that you can all um, still get your hands on at the moment if you wish to. Um, and probably from next week, perhaps we'll start playing with the new products. Um, but yeah, really, really beautiful. Now also too, being that we are in December, I have the December tutorial bundle available from Crafty Collaborations. So this is a group of demonstrators that I collaborate with as well. And we get together each month and design a project specifically for this tutorial bundle. So it's exclusive to this tutorial bundle. It's the only place you can get it. And um, this month we have 37 projects from 37 different demonstrators all around the world, which is really great. So there's all different sorts of projects in there. Um, and I have that available for my customers. When you shop with me and spend over $75, you will receive this for free. Um, if you have your own demonstrator, or perhaps you are a demonstrator, and even if you're overseas, you can purchase this from me for 28 Australian dollars. So if that is something that you're interested in, then um, please get in contact with me, and I would love to get that out to you. Okay, and of course, we've got the big annual catalog as well, which is current, and this one runs right up until the end of, well, actually, I think it runs to the beginning of May. 2nd of May, this one goes to, and this one has got lots and lots of products in it and all of your sort of staple products, your tools and all that sort of thing. So if you'd like one of those as well, also let me know if you don't already have a demonstrator who is looking after you. Okay, so I'm going to keep the um, annual, uh, don't know, do I need that one today? No, I don't need that one today. So Today, we're going to be playing with some products from the online exclusives. Did you know that there is a section? I've mentioned it before, so I'm sure that you probably all know. Um, but there is a section in the demonstrator website called online exclusives. And in there, you'll find products that you won't find in, in a printed catalogue. Um, so you'll also find in there the kits. So there's a separate kits collection, but you'll also find kits in the online exclusives, plus a whole heap of other product um, that Stampin' Up! have just put in that one section that you can't find in a catalogue. Um, so we're going to be playing with some of those products today. Sorry, I felt like I had something crawling in my hair just then, like a bug, uh, like a spider or something. I'm just thinking, I hope nothing's dropped down off the ceiling. I've just brushed my hair, so it's probably just because it's all settling and it's just moving. Um, but yeah, I'm looking in the camera thinking, is there is there a spider on my head? Oh, I don't know. No, I don't think so. I think it's just my... <laughs> just got the heebie-jeebies. <laughs> hey, Rose, how are you? Hi, Dimity, how are you? Great to have you both here. Now, I didn't chat um, about the weekend or anything. Um, I had a pretty low-key, low oh, look, look, now I've messed my hair up. I had a pretty low-key um, weekend because it was so hot here in um, Sydney. Well, I'm in Western Sydney, so we had um, 44 degrees, I think it was, on Saturday. So I didn't go anywhere on Saturday. Went outside to take Callie outside um, for toileting. And um, even just in the shade, it felt like the heat in the air was burning my skin. It was so, so hot. Um, so didn't that's the only time basically I took her out was to quickly go to the toilet and straight back inside. Um, and yeah, so just stayed inside. I was preparing some things for um, my team for Christmas. So that's exciting. So uh, I can get everything in the post this week. And yeah, just trying to bring a few things up to date. And I did work a bit yesterday, but just cruisy, just cruised on. Um, but yeah, did anybody else do anything exciting for the weekend? Or on the weekend, I should say. Let me know in the comments if you did. 
Um, now I should say too that if you are joining me for the first time, please feel free to say hi and let us know where you're joining from. Um, we always love to meet new people and uh, it's great to have people crafting along with us. Now feel free to keep chatting with me as we go. Um, sometimes when I'm getting into my craft and I forget to look up at the camera so I might miss a comment or two. So if I don't respond for a while, feel free to ask it again. Um, and I think we might have Amber, um, who is my, my daughter, assistant, um, on the other end as well. So hopefully she'll pick up any comments as we're going if I miss them. Now, I did, didn't did grab, I need to grab a little bit of blue tack just to hold my grid paper in place. I've got my grid paper today because um, we might be doing, we're going to be doing some colouring techniques and we might do some blending as well. So... Without further ado, I think we'll get started because this project might take a little while today. All right, so I'm gonna cover up the camera to tip it down to the desktop and just, I do that so that I don't make you all dizzy. And we'll see if this one will stay stuck because it's becoming unsticky. I need to make a new one soon. All right, here we go. Let's try this. Okay. Let's tighten everything up. And bring the camera down and let's see how that's looking. Oops, got my light caught there. Some light and that's not looking too bad. We might move the keyboard now because we don't need that right this minute. Okay, and I'll just, I'm going to reposition this here with grid paper. I feel like I'm over a little bit far to one side, but that's okay. See how far up I can take this right up there, I think. There we go. The other reason I was taking it a bit cruisier on the weekend too is because my back is playing up again. So it's, I don't know what I've done, but um, yeah, it's been a little bit dodgy over the weekend. So trying to lift and bend and twist and all those things it's not very happy at the moment with me doing all of that so I've been having to take it a little bit easily been having to get Amber to reach and grab me things and <laughs> which which is always annoying I don't like to have to ask people all the time to do things for me I like to be independent and do them myself <laughs> but it is what it is hey Brenton how are you going all right now, the products that I'm going to show you today, you can find in my online store. And to find my online store, hang on, my camera is tipping a little bit at a weird angle. Let me see if I can just straighten that up. Sorry if I'm going to make you dizzy here for a sec. Is that a bit better? I was just sitting at a bit of a weird angle. And now I've probably made it crooked. I have a little bit. Let's give it a little tweak. Sometimes if it's not sitting in the cradle properly, it can like warp, it can distort the, um, that's better. It can distort the um, angle a little bit and it looks makes everything look weird. So I like to have it nice and um, straight. Um, okay, so what we're gonna be playing with today, yes, so as I was saying, the products that I'm showing you today um, are currently available in the online store and you can find them um, through my blog so you can find my online shop in on my blog at mandy's papercraft creations.blogspot.com and while you're there if you haven't yet subscribed to my newsletter feel free to subscribe to my newsletter so that I can keep you up to date with all of the latest goings on with Stampin Up with the latest sales promotions what's happening I put creative inspiration in there um, there's links to lots of other things that I put in there as well. Um, so yeah, so feel free to subscribe to my newsletter while you're there. And you just click on the shop button if you're looking for my shop. And this here is my December 2023 host code. So be sure to use this host code if you're shopping with me um, this month in December 2023. 
Now I do have the website, the Stampin' Up! website as well, which you can go to also. Um, you'll find different content on there too. So feel free to have a look there as well if you'd like to. And you'll also find my shop button there as well. So you can find that either way. All right. Now, a few weeks ago, I put out a little poll on my business page. It was a, it was a, a this and that um, question to see which products you would like me to play with and the fluffiest friends won um it was it was actually quite close but the fluffiest friends won and so i ordered it because that's what you had all asked for so i ordered this bundle and so this is what we're going to be creating with today so this is super super cute as i mentioned it's in the online exclusives um in the online store so that's where you'll find them and we've got these cute little animals and they're all little fluffy and just adorable so we've got a little bunny a little bird i'm not sure if it's a bird or a chick i think it's a bird i guess it could be either depending on how you color it a beaver who's holding a little heart which is super cute a little cat a bear with his honey pot and you all know how much i love my honey i've spoken about that before so i thought oh my goodness i have to do something with the, the bear with the honey pot and this little guy down here, I think it's a guinea pig. Um, to me, it looks like a guinea pig. It's got markings on its little face like a guinea pig. But I guess if you're in America, it could be a gerbil or a hamster, um, whatever you would like it to be. And then we've got some twigs here, which could either be a nest for the bird or it could be a, um, a beaver's, um, oh, what do you call them? What do, what's the beaver's house called? They make it of sticks. Um, is it a den? No. Is it? Oh, goodness. I'm trying to think what it's called. Let me know in the comments if you know what a beaver's um, house is that they create. Not a house. A You know, like their... <laughs> yeah, their house. <laughs> uh, we've got some cute flowers. And we've got some little bees down here as well, which are super adorable. Um, so that's what we're going to be playing with. Now this set has coordinating dies and I haven't even looked at the dies yet. I just took the plastic off before I went live and I haven't even opened them yet. I thought I would open them with you all today. I mean, I've, I've seen them online, but I haven't opened my set yet. So let's have a look and see what we get in the set. Okay. So we have got dies to cut out each of the animals. So let's see, that's the bear. That's the little guinea pig. I'm gonna call it a guinea pig. Um, that looks like the beaver because it's got the tail. Um, that one would be the cat, I think, because it's the next biggest, and then the bunny rabbit, and then the chicken. And then we've got the, the twigs or the nest. Then we've got some additional dies. So we've got a branch, some leaves, a beehive, um, a separate balloon. Always great to have balloons, actually, because they can come in handy for so many different projects, especially birthdays and celebrations. We've got more leaves over here as well. And we've got some grass. I always love having grass dyes. And look, we've got all these leaves here. So we've got lots and lots of leaves here, which is great. So there you go. So that's the bundle, the Fluffiest Friends bundle. So you can just purchase the stamp set or you can get the stamp set and dies. Oh, and I forgot to mention this one too. So this is a big, um, sort of like an arch, almost like an arch cutout. But you can also make it look like um, a bear's den for the bear to, to sit inside. Um, or just have it like a cutout window on your card. I'm sure that there, oh look, there's a large balloon too. I missed that one. It's a large balloon and a small balloon. So that's cool. So yeah, so you can use that one in lots of different ways. Um, now this stamp set is a cling stamp set, so they're all the red rubber. And um, I got Amber to put the stickers on before I went live today. Now the other stamp set that I've pulled out, uh, or that I ordered, I should say, is the Softly Said. And this one is also in the online exclusives because the Fluffiest Friends doesn't have any sentiments. So I thought, well, we need some sentiments. Now these are quite large, so I'm not sure. And they're only shown at 95% on the cover. So they're a little bit larger than that in real life. Um, so I'm not sure how these will fit with the, the card that I've got in my head. But we'll see how we go but if not we can use them on the inside and these are also a cling set 
and I haven't put my stickers on yet because it's brand new and I haven't used it yet um, but we'll choose which one we're going to use and then we can I'll show you how to put the stickers on I know I've shown that many times but um, sometimes we get new people coming to um, to watch these videos and sometimes they won't have seen that so I'll show that again today when we go to use that now the other thing we're using today which isn't from the online exclusives but let me just move this across this is the um, garden walk designer series paper six by six now this is in the current mini catalog that is retiring so I thought well I still had some of that left and because it's retiring I thought we'd use it up today well not use it up but we'll use some of it um, so let's have a look at these beautiful patterns on here lots of pretty florals not sure exactly how I'm going to use these yet today but we'll work it out and we've got some more basics so we've got the real patterned florals on one side and then you've got some more basic patterns on the reverse side that aren't they just so pretty I love this one really love this one so pretty it reminds me of like a pretty skirt or a dress or something like that I love the tones in this one this one sort of reminds me of vintage oh I think it goes up that way because these ones go that way we've got this one goes really well with the bear I've seen this one used a lot with the bear actually I might have used this one this one's got some poinsettias on it so you can use this one for Christmas and then this pretty one I love this one as well with the roses on it and the daisies it's really pretty I love the colors in that too so and this one would even be great for a masculine card or this one any of like a lot of these would be great for masculine cards as well so you can use these in lots of different ways these papers so if you don't like, it's just, um, like with any of the Stampin' Up! Designer Series paper, if you don't like some of the patterns on one side, there's usually a reverse side that you can use. Well, most of the pattern, most of the Designer Series papers are patterned on the other side, unless they're a specialty that has foil in them, and sometimes they're only one-sided because of the foiling. Um, but yeah, lots and lots of patterns there to play with. So we're going to use some of that as well. Now I've got lots of Stampin' Blends out too. Um, and just before we get started, I was inking up my memento because I was stamping the bear um, just to, to have a little practice with the bear. And I thought, oh, it's a little bit pale, so I probably need to ink my memento. So I hadn't, I hadn't inked that for a while. So just so you know, you can buy the refills for that. Um, and I was just letting that ink settle. And then I was going to just do a test to see if I've got the right level of ink on there. So I've already put the ink on the, the pad. So we'll give it a go and see um, how it's looking now, if it's a bit darker. I was finding it a little bit hard to get the ink right on his nose. Oh, now my ink pad is inkier. It's looking like that went straight on his nose that time. So let's give it a go and see how that's looking now. Yeah, that's better. Still a little bit, we might still need a little bit more, a little bit more in the center here. Let me just put a little bit more in the center. There we go. Now sometimes when you've inked up your, um, your ink pad, it's good just to let it sit for a little bit. Or if like me, you have a, an inky bone folder, then we can use the bone folder just to spread the ink and to push it down into the pad a little bit. And just get a baby wipe ready to clean that. So I'll just give it a little bit of a wipe over with the bone folder. If you don't have a, a spare bone folder for this, you can use an old gift card. Um, you just don't want to use anything with sharp edges or you can use the back of a plastic spoon or the back of a metal spoon as well. All right, and we'll give that a clean. It's, these bone folders are um, porous because they are made of cattle bone. So they do um, stain up a little bit if you are using them with ink. So just make sure that you're not using your good bone folder for that. All right, now let's do another test just to see. With my Memento, because it's a, um, a linen pad, it's a lot firmer than our um, classic Stampin' Pads, which are foam. So I like to rub it first and then do a tap, tap, tap. 
So I'll just turn that over and I'll test this on the other side. Give a nice firm press and I'll press that firmly over his little nose too. Okay, yeah, that's better than what it was earlier. Okay, good. Alrighty. Okay, so we might I'll get a clean piece of cardstock and that's what we'll start with. We'll start with stamping. Now I am using today, um, I've got some thick basic white to do the stamping because I'm going to be colouring with um, Stampin' Blends. Now this is just a half a sheet of A4 cardstock, okay? So I'm just going to cut that in half again just to use for my um, stamping. So this is just, um, yeah, you don't need measurements for this necessarily. This is just for the stamping. All of the measurements from this project I will put on my blog um, at some stage this week. And then once I've got it up on my blog, I'll post it um, here in my Facebook on my Facebook business page and then you'll know that it's ready up on the blog and you can go to the blog and get all of the um the measurements all right so that little nose I'll use a corner of my ink pad to get it on the nose maybe the nose is meant to be like that okay there we go all right so leave a little bit of a space around him so that we can die cut him out Oh, he's so adorable. Look at him. All right, now I thought we might do some of the other animals as well because I would like to create a scene. I want to create a scene. <laughs> I want to create a, a cute little scene with the animals in the background. And I'm not sure which ones I want to use yet. Um, so let's see. If we're going to go that way, we're not going to have a huge amount of space because the bear is quite large. So maybe we'll also use the rabbit and the little guinea pig. Oh, and maybe the, the bird as well. So I'll grab those out and I did pull out some blocks. So put those on some blocks. Now these are the, um, the clear blocks that you can find in the annual catalog or in the tool section of the online store and they are super duper handy and i've got lots of them because um i used to hold a lot of in-person classes and i am looking at doing some more in-person classes in 2024 so stay tuned for that um oh i'll get this i'll get the um flowers out now too because i want to use those a bit later um yeah so stay tuned for news on that i'm still um, getting that all sorted and organized ready for next year so that'll be awesome to have some in-person ew that feels sticky that's not clean it'll be good to have some in-person classes again I think that's got versa mark on it that block oops now I have versa mark on my fingers all right we'll use the not not wet side the not inky side to put our little bees on there we go okay so we've got those already on our blocks, ready to go. The flowers and the bees I'll save till later, but the little animals will. Now I haven't cleaned these ones yet. Usually with our, if you're using um, the cling stamps, the, oh sorry, the um, poly, photopolymer stamps, I always say to clean them first. It's not as important, I don't think, with the cling, but I'll do it anyway just to be sure. And the reason for that is because when you get the photopolymer stamps, they come with a little bit of manufacturing oils on them and they tend to repel the ink the first time you use them. So it's always important to give them a clean first. Um, actually, I'll clean the bear as well because we did stamp him already. So I'll just give him a clean as well. Give him a good press. I noticed earlier when, because he's got a lot of detail in him, the ink tends to get stuck in there. So I found when I was cleaning him earlier that if I push him hard and give you a little twist in the um, in the chamois, then it gets the ink out in between. Actually, you can see a little bit more in there, in between all of the detail. 
of his fur. There we go. Okay. All right, so we're done with you, little bear. You can go over there. Ha, huh, I rhymed. I'm a poet and I didn't even know it. All right, we'll put those two aside and we will stamp the bunny. So rub, 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 tap, tap, tap. Cute little bunny. Let's pop you up there, little guy or girl. Oh, that stamped beautifully. Yeah, that ink on that um, memento. I'm glad I re-inked that because it was a little bit dry. I hadn't inked it up for a while. I don't even remember last time I inked it up, actually. It must have been a really long time ago. Let me put the little birdie down here. There we go. So we've got them all there. Oh, whoops. Hang on. I went a bit heavy on his bottom part, on his legs and his tummy. And that's better. I didn't stamp it properly the first time. All right. There we go. Okay. So let's give those all a clean now. Just dab off that excess ink and then give them a clean. You want to clean your stamp straight away just so that it eliminates too much, um, too much staining on them. Memento um, doesn't stain as much. Some of the um, deeply pigmented um, colours, they do stain oh look now we've got a cute little bunny and a cute little guinea pig on our chamois and let's put a little birdie on our chamois too <laughs> they can all play there together there we go all right um dimity said oh yes a dam built with sticks and logs they enter under the water oh yes for the beavers oh thank you Dimity I couldn't remember what it was called all right now um, you might have seen if you follow Patty Bennett you might have seen and if you don't then you should <laughs> she's she's amazing she's an American demonstrator she's been with Stampin Up for many 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 years oh my goodness hang on I've got ink somewhere I've got ink on my mouse, on my um, my computer mouse over here, I can just see. So I'm going to have to just give that a wipe. Um, she did, she did, uh, played with this set not long ago and she did some fantastic colouring. So I um, found her images on Pinterest and I saved them. Um, and did you know that you can download images from Pinterest too? So Patty had, um, and Patty's got her, she's got her logo on here as well, um, and her her name. Um, so all credit to Patty. So thank you so much, Patty, for sharing your beautiful colouring tips with us um, for these cute animals. And so you can find these on Pinterest, and you can save them or pin them to a Pinterest board of yours, or you can um, download them and save them to your um, photos on your device. But I loved how she colored these and she had the um, color, uh, the color palettes there as to what she used in the Stampin' Blend. So I thought, perfect. So um, Patty's made it easy for all of us because <laughs> it depends on the colors that you want to use. But I really loved the colors that she wanted to use, especially on the bear and the beaver. I just think they look amazing. Now, she, it looks like she's used a lot of little brush strokes. I don't know that I'll be able to color them as well as Patty because she's a beautiful colorist. Um, I'm not that talented um, in terms of coloring, but I'm going to do my best to color, to copy her um, color tones that she used on hers. Um, oh, actually, she hasn't put the colors that she used on the pot and the honey, I just noticed too, but um, we can pick out some um some colors for that afterwards we'll start with the the bear um in fact you know what i'm going to do i might start with the smaller the smaller animals so i'm going to color i'm going to copy her um color swatches there so for the bird she had the knight of navy and the boho blue both in the light and the dark 
So I'm going to start with those and see how we go. Now mine will probably end up looking very different to Patty's because, as I said, I'm not as wonderful as colouring, uh, sorry, at colouring as Patty is. She's amazing. But we'll give it a go. All right, so let's see. We're going to start with a little bit of um, dark. Oh, I need to put my glasses on for this too because I'm a little bit uh, challenged with my vision these days. <laughs> so, all right, so we'll put a little bit of dark there, a little bit of dark down here, a um, little bit on the tummy. So this is the Night of Navy, and I'm just doing a little... You know a few little strokes there and then we can blend it a little bit with the light night of navy but i don't want to go too heavy with that either and then we'll come in with the boho and i think i'm going to use the light boho actually to blend that a little bit blend that now I haven't watched her video she's probably got a video that she's filmed of her coloring these um, but I haven't watched Patty's video but certainly go and look for that on YouTube she uploads most of her videos to YouTube as well and if not then you can just find her on her um, on her business page because I'm sure that that's where they will be Um, I might get out a little bit of colour lifter as well. Just to um, blend that in a little bit because it's looking, I've got harsh lines there and we don't like harsh lines. So let's just blend this out a little bit. And we'll blend. Yes, mine certainly do not look anything like Patty's. <laughs> Patty's, Patty's are amazing. Mine are not so amazing, but that's okay. It'll still be cute. Let's give a little bit more of a a white belly here. Is this one working? So the colour lifter just really shifts the colour. It doesn't, it says, I mean, the name says colour lifter, but it more sort of moves the colour around. Um, that's the light boho. I just want to take this a little bit more round the face. And we'll use a colour lifter just to sort of smooth those edges. There we go. Now we can see it's starting to lighten a little bit. Sometimes it takes a little while to um, activate. But yeah, my little birdie's a little bit a little bit darker. Now if you turn your cardstock over, you'll see where you've put your um, added your layers on top of each other it'll bleed through the cardstock so always make sure that you've got something covering your desk um, just so that the ink doesn't go through onto your um, desktop and when you add the color lifter it's adding more blending so it will um, it will cause it to bleed through a little bit more just be careful when you're going with the blend the blending brush oh sorry the um, color lifter as well that if you go Whichever way your nib is pointing is the way that it's going to push the colour. So if you're going towards the um, the outside line of the image, it'll actually push the colour towards that. So if you push it too far, like if you go too close to the line, it'll actually push the ink outside of the line, so it'll cause it to bleed out. So just be mindful of that when you are using your colour lifter. But if you do go out of the line, then you can just um, turn your, depending on where you are, just turn your paper around and then use the either the um, brush tip or the bullet tip 
and then whoop oh that one had a little bit of um, wet ink there and then just use that to just push the color back inside the lines you probably can't even tell that so much on camera um, but yeah make sure you cap your stamp and blend straight away because they are an alcohol marker and they will dry out very quickly if you leave the lids off so make sure you cap them between each use there we go so we've got our little birdie um, now the little beak I'm going to grab some let's see I'll get some light daffodil let's see what color the light daffodil ends up there we go oh yeah that's cute I think Patty might have used I don't know maybe dark yellow maybe the she might have used the dark daffodil I'm just going to use the light okay so that's our little birdie done um, now we'll move on to the little guinea pig um, well actually she's colored that one in gray granite and smoky slate so yeah I guess you could color that any color if you were doing um, if you were doing a guinea pig you would might want to use browns but because I'm using browns on the um, bear I think I'm gonna I am gonna do this one gray like Patty did with hers so this time we have got gray granite and smoky slate in the light and the dark and we will start with the smoky slate because that's going to be darker and we'll just use I'm going to use the bullet tip and it's a dark smoky slate so I'm just going to use a little bit around the edges and just around the cheeks there and then we'll use some light oh. let's check I've got that yep light smoky slate we'll blend that in a little bit and by layering the colors like by putting the dark down first and then um, like different people do it different ways some do light then dark some do dark then light but it just um, by layering the colors over each other it just helps them to blend in and give you a smoother color let's go on his little arms here as well there we go and then we'll go with some gray granite I'm going to try the light first I'll just test that here yep so just go on his face first and then we'll do his tummy I might go back in and add some a little bit of dark so this time I'm doing it the opposite this time I'm using the light then the dark just because I wasn't sure of the colors and you might notice that I'm using a circular motion and that again just helps to give you a smoother finish all right now I feel like he needs a little bit more color definition so we'll come in with a bit of the dark let me use the brush we'll do his little feet and his little hands a bit dark and I'll do his nose dark too and the inside of the ears and just a few little touches just to give him a little bit more color definition there we go all righty and I might just add a little bit of the color lifter here on the cheeks just to lighten them up a little bit 
around his cheeks and just around here, around his belly. There we go, very cute. All right, now the balloon. Um, um, let's see, the balloon, we might make that red. Let's try and see what red colors I've got up there. Poppy Parade, let's have a look and see how Poppy Parade would look. Um, we might go, what's the next one down? I think it might be real red. Oh no, that's sweet sorbet. Let's try sweet sorbet. Oh yeah, let's do sweet sorbet. Poppy Parade is a little bit more sort of pinky. So we'll go with the sweet sorbet. Okay. Nice red balloon. Does anybody else like coloring with blends? They're my favorite coloring tool. Well, apart from sponge daubers, because you all know I love inking, but in terms of um, markers, I prefer the blends. There we go. Now, while we've got the red out, why don't we do the honey pot? I'll come back to the light. So we'll color that. Let's go very carefully around his paws. I'm going to go with the light this time and then I'm going to do some detail with the dark just to add that shading. Circular motion, give a nice smooth finish. There we go. Um, hey Angela, how are you? Great to have you with us today. We're playing with some online exclusives. We've got the little fluffiest friends today by popular demand. Add a bit of extra shading at the sides here with the um, along the bottom there. There we go. Add a bit more to the balloon as well. There we go. Okay, and now for the honey, um, I'm going to grab. Uh, the dark daffodil yes I think that's a good honey color just use the dark daffodil delight for the honey dripping down the pot yum yum I love honey I just recently bought some honey I had it um I get it online from a company in Queensland and um, I might add that beak, I might add a little bit more to that beak, that's better. Um, yes, and I got it from this company in Queensland and I got a couple of different flavours. I got Leatherwood and what was the other one I got? Leatherwood and a different one which I can't remember the name of. Um, and then I also got some creamed honey with cinnamon oh it is so delicious super super delicious uh yeah we need those ones yeah so so yummy so i've been enjoying having that on my rice cakes actually all right now for the little bunny we'll let the pot dry on the uh the bear and we'll come over to the bunny the bunny we're going to use um Smoky Slate Grey Granite uh, Crumb Cake. Now let me find my crumb 
a crumb cake. It's one of these I had out. Crumb cake. Crumb cake. Yep. Crumb cake, crumb cake. And then we had Flirty Flamingo and Bubble Bath. Oops. But I think it'll be the light of both of those. Light light flirty and light bubble bath for inside the ears okay actually we might do inside the ears first so that I don't get uh, mixed up and go over those all right so we're going to go inside the ears just here and here super cute Look at this little bunny very cute and with the feet Going with the flirty flamingo, just on those lines that Stampin' Up! have given us the lines already there for the um to follow for the shading, which makes it really easy for us. And the cherry, I'll just bring in a little bit of dark flirty. Let's just check that. Okay, I'm just going to do a little bit. A little bit of highlighting with the dark flirty flamingo. There we go. And then we'll go over with the bubble bath. Did you know that you can um, blend different colors? Did you all know that? I'm sure that you probably did. You're all very clever people. Yeah, you don't have to just use the light and dark of one single colour. You can blend different colours. Oh, he needs a, his nose too. He needs a little pink nose. Let's give a little, what's this one? Dark, flirty flamingo nose. There you go. Very cute. And I'm going to come back in with the light bubble bath for the icing on the cake. Oh, and I forgot about the little pads on his toes. Um, actually, I'm going to do those in grey. Okay, so now we have got um, the smoky slate, the grey granite, and the crumb cake, light and dark making sure I've got my colors in the right order. Nope, that's, that one goes with that one. That one goes with that one. That's right, okay. Now I've got them in order. So just making sure that I didn't get them mixed up. Okay, so let's go with the darkest. And we're gonna put the darkest on the outside of the ears here. Um, when you're working with Stampin' Blends as well, you don't want to do a large area at a time. You just want to use, do a small area at a time because the, um, the ink will dry very quickly. And I'll go to the light grey granite. The ink will dry very quickly because it is alcohol based. Um, and you want to make sure that you get the blending of those tones before it dries. Okay, I'm gonna use a little bit of light crumb cake here around the face. And then his little, his little muzzle. It's not called a muzzle on a rabbit. I don't know what it's called actually. And then we'll come back in with the light grey granite. I'm just going to blend over that a little bit. And then blend that back into the sides there. Now I'm going to go over the rest of the face there. I 
I think Patty did a much better job on hers. And I have to say, I didn't practice with these colours beforehand. Um, I had, yeah, I didn't have time to, to do that. So it is what it is, but it'll still be cute. And I just heard my hubby get home. He's home early from work today for a meeting. Okay, I'll go back over again with the light grey granite. Got to keep checking to make sure I'm picking up the right colours. All right, we'll see how that dries. And then let's go down to the tummy. So we'll do the dark smoky. And to be honest, like I don't want to spend too, too much time on this colouring because I want to get on to designing the card. And because sometimes it can get a bit boring watching somebody else colour. So feel free just to do whatever you whatever else you need to do while I'm coloring have me on in the background or something until I get to the <laughs> to the designing of the actual card um I'll just add a little bit of light smoky slate my light smoky slate's getting a bit shaggy actually I'm probably going to need to um replace that soon actually it's giving a nice effect on the the body here because it gives a softer effect when it's shaggy. So that's kind of good. There we go. We better add in a little bit more of that light um, crumb cake so that that matches with the, the face as well. So we'll just add a few little touches here and there of the crumb cake and we'll go back over that with the light grey granite there we go so cute cute little bunny does anybody have rabbits does anybody have pet rabbits i always wanted a pet rabbit i never got one i did used to have pet guinea pigs though but i never had any pet rabbits Blend that and look if you go too heavy with the colors you can always use the color lifter to um, to blend it back down again so don't worry too much if I'll just swap over to the um, bullet tip just for the feet and I think I've used the gray granite oh, I used I did use a little bit of smoky slate didn't I just go around his little Little tootsies. There we go. Cute. Cute, cute, cute. All right, and now we'll use a little bit of the um, the colour lifter just around the eyes and the face and just on the belly there as well. Just to lighten that a little bit. Not sure that this color lifter is oh yes it is i was going to say i'm not sure that this color lifter is working terribly well but it is i think this one's getting a little bit dry i do have another one i should get that one out mind you the other end was a bit wet wasn't it because when i took the other cap off it um splashed everywhere there we go we'll just let that do its thing and lighten that little bit of the face up and we'll move on to the bear that's really cute yeah, different colour to Patty's, but um, still really cute. All right, the bear. All righty. Now, the colours for the bear. I'm going to have to move some of these away. Oh, actually, I'll leave the colour lifter out. All right, so for the bear, we want... I think these are the ones I had out for the bear. We want our copper clay light and dark we want our 100 so these numbers now the ones with the numbers they are from the natural tone blends you'll find them in the annual catalog or in the um 
under the ink section in the online store but you'll find them in um, they're listed as um, light medium medium light medium dark and dark colors but they go from 100 up to a thousand so for this one we're going to and the the lower the number the darker the color so we're going to be i'll put them in this order so i'm using uh 100 200 600 700 and then i'm using the light and dark copper clay as well so okay now this will be interesting to see how this turns out because i'm sure this is going to be so different to um to patty's so we'll start with the darkest first and we are just going to do a few little strokes here and there with the dark i'm just going to start with the face first then i think i'm going to go with the 600 it's a nice color actually it's a really nice color okay and we can't forget about the the muzzle as well Then we've got the, I'll put a little bit of um, copper clay in there as well. Blend in some copper clay tones. So we'll give him some copper tones in his fur. Okay, and then let's go with the 700. I'll just blend over the top of all of those. And his face. And his muzzle. Just give him a little, a few little more highlights of the uh, 600. And then we'll go over those again with the 700. Yes, that's the one, the lightest one just so that we don't have any harsh lines or streaks. There we go. And his muzzle too. All right, and we'll probably come back in. I might come back in with a little bit more of the dark. So let's try the 200. Oops. That's blended. That's actually blended right down now. There we go. And we'll come in with the colour lifter. Give him a few streaks of lighter colour there on his face. All right, we'll see how that, that colours up. Let me just grab my other colour lifter. Just want to see if this one is wetter. Oh, that one's actually gone a funny colour. It's probably blended in with some ink. Let's see if I can get that one. I think I need to replace my colour lifters. 
I must have got some ink on this one from another um, color and I didn't clean it properly. Make sure that you do clean your color lifter after using it. It might work on this one because it's sort of similar tones. We'll see. We'll see what that does. Yeah, make sure when you're using it over darker colors that you do give it a clean off on some scrap paper so that you don't, uh, it doesn't hold that color. All right, so let's just come in with the, this is the 100. Okay, and the 200. We'll do some of the 600. Well, the 600 was the one I coloured the face with, wasn't it? So we'll, we'll come back to that one. Um, copper clay. So this is the light copper clay. Giving him, lot, giving him lots of little streaks in his hair. There we go. Okay. We've still got to do the feet. I've got to do the foot as well. Just add some darker tones to the foot there. So how's everybody's Christmas um, preparations going? Are you all getting organized for Christmas? Have you got lots to do still or are you pretty well organized? I've still got lots to do. Lots and lots and lots. <laughs> Nowhere near ready. It's hard when you're working, isn't it? To try and get everything done. I have to go back and watch um, Patty's video, how she colored hers because um, she did such a great job with hers. Mine is not going to look anywhere near as good as hers, but it'll still be cute. Just, I just love how she, how she um, coloured hers. Looks amazing. Oh, you need to wrap presents, Dimity. Yes, I haven't even started that either. I'm still doing Christmas cards. I haven't even started sending them out yet. That's going to be this week. Still got some to make. I've got um, more than two thirds made, but still got some to do. So yeah, it all just takes so much time, doesn't it? And it always creeps up before you know it. Like you think, yep, yeah, got plenty of time. I'm organized. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh my goodness, where did that time go? It's already two weeks before Christmas. Oh my goodness. So this is dark copper clay. Just add some. Oh, 
highlights of dark copper clay. I don't know how she got hers looking so good. I'm looking at her picture here and I'm like, mine does not look anything like Patty's. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, so are you, Dimity, yeah, needing to make Christmas cards to make and post, yep. Oh, hey, Megan, you still haven't made your cards either. Heaps of shopping to do, yep. Oh, I'm glad I'm not the only one. Just creeps up, doesn't it? Like, before you know it, it's here and it's time to... It's time to, um start celebrating and it's like um you yeah, know i've still got too much to do <laughs> there we go okay i think we'll leave our little bear there um i think that's not too bad well, i might just add a little bit more um color lifter in this one did that other color lifter work on the face i don't know that it did that is that color lifter Oh, you know why? That's not even colour lifter. That's petal pink, that one. I picked up the wrong one. That's why that wasn't working. This one is... I was saying about I thought it had picked up another colour. That's why, because it actually was a petal pink. It wasn't colour lifter. This is my other colour lifter. Oh, that one's wet. Yes. I picked up the wrong one before. Huh, how funny is that? Oh, this one's much wetter than the other one. Oh, good. Okay, so let's see if we can get a little bit of um, light and dark here in our little bear. Oh, yeah, that's, that's working so much better than the other one did. Might add some more to the other ones. Yeah, that's working much better. Okay, great. Good, good, good. Okay, and maybe on his leg and on his toes. I think we need a bit more definition on this foot. The foot is um, not dark enough. Copper clay dark, I think we need. The little pads on his foot are not dark enough. There we go, that's better. It just gives a little bit more definition. I should chuck out that other colour lifter. Was that the one not working or is it this one? Which one is it now? No, that's the dry one. I think this is the wet one. Yes, and chuck out that one. We'll get rid of it. Oh, that's looking better now because it's lightening it up. Good. And we've got a little bit of lighter colour around his face there. Make sure that goes up at a nice angle. We don't want it straight across his face. There we go. Yay. And little bunny will just fix his little face too. Now that I have a colour lifter that's working and it's actually a colour lifter and not a petal pink. <laughs> Silly me. I didn't even look at the colour. Like, I was trying to look at the colour on the side. I couldn't see it quickly. So I'm just like, oh, yeah, that's the right one. But it wasn't. There we go. Okay, cute. All right, doesn't look like Patty Bennett's, but it looks okay. And it's still cute. Look at all these colours that we've used today. Oh, my goodness. All these colours. Of course, if you don't have all of these colours, 
you just use the colors that you have and you um you just um swap them out for what you do have all righty okay so they are done good 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 now let's start with a card base um I don't even know what color card base I'm going to have. Oh, you know what I was going to do? Um, we might, uh, they should be right to die cut. I was thinking I maybe not might need to let them dry a bit to die cut them, but I think they'll be okay. I'll bring in the dies and we'll take the dies off. Oh, I didn't take a copy of them yet. To um, Normally I photocopy my dies before, it's my new thing. I photocopy them before I take them off the die sheet so I know where they all go. But I forgot because I only just opened them um, with you all. So I'm just going to do a quick trace. This is what I used to do beforehand. And I do have some more magnetic sheets, but lately I haven't been getting them onto the magnetic sheets. I've been um, so busy with other things that they just haven't made it to the magnetic sheets. So the photocopying has been my new go-to. But this is the other trick if you can't photocopy them. So it just takes a few minutes, but I wanna make sure that I can get them all back on the sheet again. anyone crafting along with me today I forgot to ask you all that what are you all doing while you're watching are you crafting or are you cooking or preparing dinner what are you doing I like to um, have people people's videos on in the background when I'm in the kitchen preparing food or whatever um, yeah well, sometimes if I'm in the craft room and I'm doing paperwork or I'm doing um, you know what it like computer work or whatever I like to have something on in the background just to keep me company oops there we go round this one oh you're watching me color Megan you find it relaxing oh really Oh, well, thank you. Oops, I just drew on my die. That's okay. It'll still work. Oh, well, thank you. I'm glad you find it relaxing. <laughs> I'm sure some people find it very boring watching other people colour. <laughs> but, yeah. Oh, I'm glad you find it relaxing. I'm trying to rush here, so I'm um, not doing a very good job of this, and I keep on slipping and drawing on my dies. That's all right. They'll still work. I have to say, like, people who colour really well, I do like to watch them colour because I like to see their technique and to see how they do it. Um, but the good thing about the Stampin' Blends is that you don't have to be an artist. It may, they, they just colour so well that and they blend so well that it makes you look like a professional when clearly I'm not. <laughs> Oh, you're just watching Dimity. You're going out soon to take photos of your granddaughter's graduation. Oh, lovely. Congratulations to your granddaughter. What um, what year is she graduating from, Dimity? Uh, what else do we need? This one is a bunny. We've got bunny. We've got the little guinea pig, hamster, gerbil, whatever you want to call it. I don't think I've seen a grey guinea pig. I don't know that mine. Is, this one is a guinea pig. Is this the bird? I think this one might be the bird. Let's see. Is that the birdie? Uh, yes, it will be. That way. There we go. Yeah. Cool. All right. I also wanted to die cut the... Um, I might get them out in a minute, though, because I don't want to get too many out. I'll get myself all lost. 
and I might use my big machine and I'll put them all on together and put them, oh, oops, I dropped it, and um, put them all together at the one time. I uh, put them all through together at the one time. Grab my post-it tape. Well, it's not post-it brand, actually. My sticky label tape is what I should call it. All right, so make sure I get these dies lined up properly because I spent all that time coloring these. I want to make sure that I get them die cut out properly. I'm going to put two pieces on each one just to make sure they don't move. There we go. Oops, can't have it going over the other image though. Let's come up here a bit more. There we go. Ah, oh, year six. Oh, that's exciting. Going to high school next year. I remember when my kids graduated from year six, it was very emotional. Especially my girls. I don't know. I don't remember my son being emotional when he graduated from year six, but my girls were. Especially my second one. Oh my goodness. She was so emotional. She just didn't want to leave her beautiful teachers and her beautiful friends because some of them were going to different schools and things. And um, yeah, they just had such a great, they really, really enjoyed their. Um, Especially the girls, they really enjoyed their primary school days. They had a really beautiful school. It was such a such a little community. Their school it was down in the bush, and um, they said the kangaroos come up to the the um, fences, and sometimes inside the fences. They also used to get snakes. <laughs> so they'd, they'd often uh, the school would often have to call out the snake catchers. Um, I had the snake catches out a few times when my girls were there, actually. And when my girls were first there, they used to have chickens in a chicken coop down the back. But um, I think the foxes got in and got the chickens. And then they, they didn't get any more chickens after that. They thought that, it, I don't know, I guess they figured it was too sad and too hard to um, keep them, you know, keep them safe. All right, I'm going to run this through my machine, my stamp and cut and emboss machine, but I'll just do it off camera so I don't have to lift it over just because my back's a bit dodgy at the moment. So bear with me for one sec. Um, here you go. You can have a look at the stamp set while I'm doing that. Oh, they're so adorable. Look, they cut out beautifully. Oh my goodness. I think the time, taking the time to color them really was worth it. Cause look at that. Look how cute they are. They look like they're having a little party with the, um, the balloon and the cupcake and the bear's got his honey pot. They're just all having a party, party, party. Oh, how did I survive the weather yesterday? Oh, actually, it was Saturday, Megan. Um, yesterday was a lot cooler, um, but it was Saturday. It was really, really hot. Uh, I survived it by staying inside in the air conditioning. <laughs> I actually didn't. I, the only time I went out was to take Callie out to the toilet. Um, and I was telling the ladies before that even just standing in the shade um, for a few minutes, it felt like the heat in the air was burning my skin. I even wasn't in the sun at that point. It was so hot. It was just, it was like standing in an oven. Well, you know, when you, um, when you have the oven on really hot and you open up the oven door and it like catches you in the face, it was kind of like that, but standing in it and not being able to get out of it was awful. So yes, I have to say I did not enjoy that. Hang on a sec. I'm going to move these plates because they're reflecting. Yeah, I was very thankful for the air conditioning. It was actually very cool inside in the air conditioning. It was working very well, thank goodness. Um, and gave Callie a little a little um, ice block. It was just frozen water on a stick, which I'd made for her. 
um, to cool her down after being outside. We were only outside for a few minutes, but she really felt it just being outside for that time. And silly thing, she kept on wanting to go in the sun. I'm like, no, stay in the shade. <laughs> I think, did I take, I think it was that day, I took an umbrella outside as well, just to keep her and myself in the shade the whole time. All right, so there's our little critters. How cute are they? So adorable. Oh my goodness. Look at them. Just super cute. All right, so I want to have, I want to make a little scene with them. Maybe the bird is going to have to stand on his back. I don't know where the bird is going to fit. Maybe the bird can be in the background even. We'll see. We'll see how we're going to fit them on. Um, okay, I'm going to um, get a white piece of cardstock. So we'll cut, you know what, I've got a piece here. And I'm going to do some inking on that, but I'm going to cut it down first. Because I'm going to design a background here. Just not sure how these are all going to fit on. Don't know where our little birdie's going to fit. Or maybe the little birdie can go down there. Oh, that would be cute. Yeah, something like that. And then I wanted to have some DSP in the background. And then I was going to do a little scene. I'm just wondering which which um, paper to have in the background. Do I want a really floral one or do, oh, I love the one with the flowers. Oh, they could be sitting in a field of flowers. That's actually probably a good, good um, size. Could have that in the background. And then I was going to do some, yes, that's what we'll do. And then I'm going to do some um, blending on here. And then we're going to use the bees and the flowers to create a little a little scene. So we'll cut some layers. All right. Um, oh, you saw the ice block? Yeah. You usually mash up watermelon and freeze it in ice cubes for Frank. And Basil is too silly to work out how to eat ice blocks. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Oh, poor little Basil. Poor Basil. I didn't know that animals could eat, uh, dogs could eat watermelon actually. So that's a really good idea. You know what I was thinking? I was nearly going to. Um, I'm just scrolling back to see. Um, whoops, hang on a sec. I'm just scrolling up to see what comments I missed earlier. Hang on, I'll come back to that, Megan. Um, what did I miss? What did I miss up here? Do, 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 do. Uh, Oh, yeah, that's all good. Megan, I just saw your comment there. You had been watching. Um... Oh, you should... <laughs> you should be making your Christmas cards now, but this is more fun watching me. <laughs> well, you can create while you're watching. Just have me on in the background. Um... Oh, Rose, you're worn out thinking about everything that you've got to do, still doing your cards and need to shop. Yep. I thought you'd finished all your Christmas cards, actually, Rose. You're still going. Oh, good on you. Um, time does just disappear. Yes. Yep. Yeah, Amber said, every year we say let's start earlier and it never happens. Exactly. You can look at, back at this video to see where they sit. You can look back at this video to see where they sit. Where what sits? What did I, what was I talking about? I don't know what that refers to. <laughs> um, scrolling down, scrolling down. Um, did it reach 44? Uh, I think so, Megan. I think, I think it reached 44 or was it 43? They were predicting 44 and I think it got pretty close. Yeah. Dimity says, when I was at uni, I was asked what I was looking for. Someone said to me to say snakes. I was looking for plants with seeds to collect ready. Um, it got around uni pretty quickly. I was looking for snakes. Oh, <laughs> oh that's funny. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, okay. So they can have watermelon, but not too much due to the sugar content. Oh, yes, true. Blueberries. I have heard blueberries are good for them as well. Actually, you know what Callie loves? She loves banana. So frozen banana would be good as well. 
a little bit of mashed up frozen banana or something that would be really good all right so we're going to create a just a basic layer here um, I'm going to do 10.1 centimeters uh, high so 10.1 and we're going to make it 14.45 centimeters wide you know what I could have made this the whole card front really to be honest I could have but anyway I've cut it now so it's all good never mind and these pieces I can save for something else this one I can use to decorate the inside and this one will make another project with that one all right and then the card front or well yes the one I'm going to make the scene on um, I might make this a three millimeter border so we'll go 9.5 so that we can see some of that pretty paper hopefully that'll still leave us enough height we'll find out in a minute by 13.85 13.85 and you know what i'm just thinking did i cut this at the right length because i feel like i oh yeah that's right let's see now Yeah, still not going to get to see much of that pretty paper though, are you? I wonder if I should cut that down a bit more. Let's see how big the the bear is on there first. Mm. Yeah, I could cut that down a little bit more. Why don't we take a little bit more off that? We'll take another, um, let's see, um, how much more shall I take off that? Let's take off another two millimeters each side so what do i cut that at 9.5 so let's take that down to 9.1 put my sorry it's just an extra millimeter each side and 13.65 13.65 well you can go 13.6 if you want to if you don't want to worry about the 0.5s um Oh, wait, no, that wasn't right. That's got to go to 13 point, uh, wait, what did I do that at? 9.1, so it took off four millimeters. It did take off four millimeters, so it should be 13.45. Oh my goodness, maths. As I said to everyone earlier, I'm tired today. <laughs> my brain is just not, not computing. All right, let's see now. That gives us more of a pretty border yeah that's pretty i wanted to see more of that pretty paper and that's still enough height the only problem is now the width we might not we might have to juggle the the little critters where we're going to put them so let's just work this out first because i think it's going to be quite tight oh they can go off the edge a little bit that'd be oh look they still fit yay and then our little birdie can just sit down here yeah good okay good yeah let's do that all right as i said if you miss the measurements don't worry because i will be um putting them on um my blog so never uh, don't worry about that all right so we're going to do a bit of blending some blue and some green now just deciding what color green do we want i think we're going to go garden i think we're going to go garden green and do I have another green one or is that the only green one? Oh, that's the only green one. And balmy blue for the sky. All right. We might start off with the green, actually, because that's the deeper colour. Here we go. Oh. Uh, Megan said banana is good. Oops, where'd that go? Yes, banana is good too, but only in small amounts as it's, as it's high natural sugar as well. Yes. I don't give it to Callie very often, only every so often. Um, you saw Callie's ice block? Yeah. Yeah, she likes her ice block. It was the first time I'd given it to her actually like that, and she loved it. All right, so let's just blend a little bit of... Oh, that got a bit of streakiness on there, didn't it? Where'd that come from? Um, yeah, she loved it. She thought it was great. 
plain water like i'm happy just to give her plain water ice blocks because she liked it anyway so she doesn't know that they can come in different flavors so it's all good <laughs> Uh, all right, let's see how high up do we want this grass to go. I'll go a little bit higher. So you notice that I'm dabbing off my blending brush just on the paper first before I take it to my cardstock. It just takes off the blobbiness. Like you don't want the color to get too heavy. If I didn't do that, see how this, I don't know if you can see, but there's like streaky bits down here because I didn't dab it off enough on the paper first, so it kind of created those streaks, which is all right because it's gonna be grass anyway, but um, you kind of don't want too many of those types of streaks. There we go, that'll be good. All right, let's do the sky. We're doing lots of coloring techniques today, aren't we? See how that, um, the color lifter has just lightened his face now and his belly a little bit and just given a little bit more definition in the the tones that made a difference didn't it losing that color lifter it helps when you use a color lifter that actually is working <laughs> um, now when you are blending when you're using your blending brushes and you've used another color make sure you're not dabbing off over the top of that color because you might pick up that color so make sure you're using a clean um, area of your scrap paper to um, dab off your brush. Sorry, I'm trying to think as I'm doing. <laughs> I'm struggling today. Oh dear. And I'm probably bumping the camera a little bit too, so I apologize for that. And you'll notice that when I'm doing my blending, I'm using circular motions and I'm actually starting off the paper first before bringing the, the um, blending brush onto the cardstock. And that then, I think I need some more ink in my, um, in my balmy blue ink pad because this is making me work very hard. You know what, I might try. I have seen that if you ink off your block onto, sorry, if you ink your ink pad onto a block and then pick up the color from there, you can get a better color definition, but you should have a clean block and mine's not super clean. Yes, this ink pad definitely needs some more ink in it. It's quite dry. So let's see if this gives me more, more color. See if that works. You still have to dab it off though, just to be sure. Uh, yeah, a little bit. It's giving a little bit more colour. Nearly there. Nearly there. I love blending. You do get a sore arm though if you if you're doing a lot of blending. Um, it, it is a good workout. There we go. All right, so we've got our sky, we've got our grass. Oh, got a little bit of something, something on there. All right, there we go. Just remember, I've got to re-ink that one. Remind me, Amber, I've got to re-ink the balmy blue. Okay, and we'll give that one a clean in a bit. I'll just put that out of the way for the moment so I don't stick my hand in it. Okay, so now we have got some little bits of grass here. So we're going to die cut some of those. Oop, if I can get that off there. There we go. I also really want to use the, um, the bees hive. Beehive. Bees hive? Beehive. So, but I'm wondering if it's going to fit in. Let's see if we can fit it. I don't know if we're going to fit it because I might have these layers cut down a little bit too, um, too low. Sorry, I don't even know what I'm saying. I might have cut this um, too narrow, too, no, what's the word? Not high enough. That's it. Not high enough to have the beehive in there as well. Uh, it's not going to fit in this one. 
Well, it could fit over here though. It could fit here, but the branch goes that the branch goes that away. So it needs to hang this side. Unless I move him. Oh no, that needs to be. Let's see. Ooh, ooh, I could nearly get it in there, couldn't I? Oh, I could get it in there. No, that's gonna be it's gotta be coming off there. If I put him right at the edge, let's see. I'm just trying to work out if it's going to work with the beehive or if I need to leave the beehive off this one. Oops, because it's gotta have the branch going. It's gotta be hanging from the branch. There we go, and then we could have the bunny. And it's just that we've got gray and gray beside each other, which I was trying to avoid. But if I pop the bird in there in between them, that kind of breaks them up a little bit. This one could be sitting up a bit higher. It could be floating up with the balloon. And then we could put the little bird there between them to break them up a little bit. What do you think? That would work, wouldn't it? And then we can add in the grass and the bees. Yes. Yes, that'll work. Okay, good. All right, so we'll die cut some of this grass. Oh, this one picked up some of the sticky from the um, the die sheet. That's going to stick to the plates, isn't it? If I can get that off. Let's see if I can get that off. I didn't take that off the die sheet very carefully, did I? Pulled the adhesive off too. What about the little bird on the branch? Oh, yeah. Instead of the beehive? Do you mean instead of the beehive, Megan? I like how the little bird's looking up towards the um, the balloon, actually. That would be re that's really cute. All right, so we'll cut some of those. And we'll need some leaves as well. So we'll just die cut a whole heap of leaves. If I can get them off the sheet without trying to pull off all the adhesive. Woo! There's a whole stack of these little leaves different sizes so let's just do a whole heap of those because I don't know how many we'll need and if I put them on one sheet of green then they'll um they will all just cut at one time which is awesome I love it when Stampin' Up gives us multiple oh there we go multiple of the one die all right so we'll do all of this out of garden green. Let me grab some garden green. In fact, I have got some scraps here that we can use up. Always good to use your scraps. Probably need multiples of the grass pieces, I think. Let's turn them that way. There we go. We'll use the tape that we had before. Just hold them in place. Oh, well, I've got them held in place, but they're not held in place on the paper, are they? There we go. That's better. And let's use some of these scraps up for the leaves. Just add a whole heap of these leaves on here. And then... We'll be all good. We can just run them through. Stick these down. I'm just going to stick these down so that they don't um, slide off when I go to die cut them. And also too so that they don't bump into each other and overlap because we don't want to break the machine if that happens. I'll put these little ones on this one. Is that all of them? That's all of them, I think. There we go. Okay. Good, good, good. Oh, now we need to do the branch and the... Um, let's move that over there. We need to do the branch and the... What's this? No, this. <laughs> Beehive. Oh my goodness, one of those days. Okay, beehive and branch. Uh, 
early espresso for the branch. Actually, we might fit it in on that one. And crushed curry for the beehive. Stick that on there. Should we use that smaller piece? Is that going to fit? Oh, perfect. Look at that. There we go. All right. So we will put all of those on our plate and I'll die cut these all at once. And that'll save so much time. We might just need to come back in and do some more of the, um, the grass because I think we're going to need more than one of those. Um, one of each of those. I think we're going to need a few. All right, there we go. Okay, I'll put them through my machine. So bear with me one moment. That is so adorable. Oh, that branch has come out really fine, actually. Much finer than I thought. I love that. That's a great size. Fantastic. All right, so all these little die cut pieces, I'm just going to pop them up here and I'll put them away later. So my grass has cut. All of those have cut. These ones have got a few stuck in there still. Okay, we'll poke those ones out in a minute. Alrighty, so we've got our grass. So there's our beehive and our branch. We've got some grass. We've got all these little leaves so we can use as many of those as we like. And then we've got these ones as well, which have they, these ones are just stuck in the dies a bit, so probably because of the tape, actually. It's probably holding them in, so we'll just poke them out. There we go. And this one, too. Oh, poke. There we go. Great. Good. Now, the only thing I wanted to do was um, a couple more of the grass pieces because I think we're going to need more than just two. So we'll get some more of those scraps. They fit on there. Might have to spread them out a little bit. There we go. That'll be good. Stick that one there, that one there. All right, I'll just run those back through. Keep that for some more. Okay. There we go. Hopefully we've got enough grass pieces now. I'll do a um I'll do a little test and see in a sec. How are we going for time? Oh my goodness, it's six o'clock already. Goodness me. Where does the time go? Seriously? But you know, it takes time to design a card, doesn't it? And especially when you're doing a lot of colouring techniques, it does take a bit of time, but it's always worth it in the end because it always turns out really well when you spend the time. So, but don't let me keep you. If you need to go, feel free to go and do the things that you need to do and um, you can always come back and watch the replay later. Three, four. Ah, it's not going to go all the way across, is it? We need one more. Okay, we need another scrap. Another scrap. Just do, we'll do two more. And then that will be it. And then we will put together our little scene. 
There we go. All right. Do you know though, even though it's been, um, oh, you got meat on the barbecue and dinner's on its way. Oh, that's great, Rose. Barbie, yum. That sounds awesome. We haven't had a barbecue for a while, actually. I have to get hubby to um, crank up the barbie again soon, I think. Because we love a good barbie, but just haven't had one for a while. I don't know why. <laughs> What are you having with your barbecue, Rose? Do you have veggies or do you have salad? Or do you have something else? What do you like to have? What does everyone like to have with their barbecue? Everyone can chime in on that. We usually like to have, well, I grew up always having um, salad with a barbecue, which I still love, but usually my family want roast vegetables. So I usually have to do roast veggies. Ah, you have veggies with yours, Rose? Yeah. That's what my family likes too. Okay, here we go. All right, so we've got all the grass pieces now. So that's good. And first of all, I think I need to get this beehive on because everything else is going to be around the beehive. Now, before I add the beehive, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the Dark Daffodil Delight and I'm going to just colour every second row because it's got like the, um, what do you call it, the embossing on it. <laughs> what do you call it? See, so tired. Actually, I think I'm going to use a bullet tip. Oh, you have both salad and veggies on different days, Dimity. Yeah, yeah, sometimes it does depend on the weather too, doesn't it? Because sometimes it's just too hot for veggies. There we go. I'll just colour in each layer. I'm just using the Daffodil Delight. And this is crushed curry cardstock. And it just gives like more of that beehive sort of look. Oh, look, I've got some on my finger. Just wipe that off with my baby wipe there we go yeah so that just gives it a little bit more definition like a beehive doesn't it cool all my rings are doing their own thing there let's go that way or that way no it definitely goes that way okay so let's create our little scene here ah. um yes it is normally hot up there isn't it dimity oh today's cooler only 32 oh there you go I don't know what today was here, actually, but it's uh, probably not as hot and humid as where you are, Dimity, of course. But um, it was going to be a lot cooler today. But it still felt, I don't know. It No, sorry, I shouldn't say it was going to. Yesterday was the coolest day and today was warmer, uh, cooler than Saturday, but warmer than yesterday, I think. And then it was going to start to heat up again this week. It's like, seriously? <laughs> All right, so I think if we pop that there, then we can still fit in our bear and all his little mates. Yes, okay, let's do that first. Um, you have new potatoes at present. They are called pink eyes. Ah, that sounds nice. It's a nice change from winter potatoes. Oh, lovely. There you go. I haven't heard of pink eye um, potatoes. Perhaps I've eaten them without knowing it, but I've not heard of them. Do you? And so, do you just roast them? Do you um, herb your veggies or anything, Rose? Or do you just roast them with a bit of um, oil or something on them? Like, how do you roast your veggies? How does your family like their roast veggies? Mine like theirs herbed. We get um, a herbed seasoning 
that I put on ours. And I recently discovered that it actually has gluten in it, which I didn't know. And funnily enough, I've not, I've not noticed that I've reacted from it. Um, but then again, I don't know because I've not really, because I never realized it was um, gluten, uh, had gluten. I could have potentially already been reacting, but not pinpointing what it was. I think I'm going to put that on a um, dimensional. Now, I was going to talk to you about dimensionals too because you know how we have our um, all of our kits, the kits from the kits collection, and you get, with some of those kits, you get Stampin' Dimensionals. So I have got all of these Stampin' Dimensionals left over from previous kits. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to use them up. Now, the thing to note about... Um, dimensionals from kits is that they are higher than our standard dimensionals um, so our standard dimensionals are all the same height you've got the the foam adhesive um, sheets which I've got mine all cut up in there and then you've got the minis and the standard dimensionals um, so they are all the one height but the ones that come in the kit usually they are slightly higher. So if you are mixing between the ones from the kits and the standard ones, just be aware of that, that the height is going to be different, okay? So I just thought I'm just gonna use all kit ones today. I have got some minis in there that are from kits and they're the same height or the same depth as these ones. But I thought I'll use some of those up today because I've got so many of them that, um, you know, I don't wanna waste them. I wanna use them up. I think we just need one on this actually. So let's just put one on there, make sure we've got that up the right way. Make sure I've got that positioned so that my little bear is going to still fit. So I'll move that over a little bit like that. There we go. Great. And we've got our bear there. Okay, so now we can fit everything else in around that. Oh, and I will just trim off just got a little bit of an edge there. So I'm just going to trim that off where that just went over the edge. Just only a tad, like I probably didn't even really have to worry about it, but just because I'm fussy, <laughs> I'll do it. Okay. All right. So now let's lay down some grass. So if you didn't want to use the grass dye, but why wouldn't you? Because you've got it there. But if you didn't want to use the grass dye, you could just tear some um, cardstock to make the grass but look we've got it there so why not use it because it comes with the dyes and I love I love using grass dyes I'm just going to make sure that I get these lined up in fact I might start that one off a little bit because this last one is going to go off a little bit and then we're just going to overlap them a little bit so that they look like you know the grass like they look seamless kind of thing and just want to make sure that last one yep okay and then all our little critters can sit down there on the grass okay so let's glue these on oops oh I also do want to oh I was going to stamp some flowers actually maybe I should stamp the flowers before I stick the glue although I don't know if we're going to see any of the flowers because the little critters are going to take up so much of the space. I could stamp some flowers in behind them, perhaps. So let's stop a little bit higher above the grass and there and there. And the little birdie, little birdie's going to be in the background, kind of. Ugh, I must have sticky fingers because they keep sticking to me. There we go. So maybe I could do, I don't know. I don't know about the flowers. I don't think we're going to see them actually. Maybe just some in there. In behind those little critters. Because yeah, the grass is going to be all the way across there. That's not going to leave much room because I'm cramming a lot in on here. Maybe I don't need them. Maybe I'll just add the bees. Yeah, maybe we won't use flowers this time. We'll just add the bees. We'll just stamp a few of the buzzy bees. I'm going to sneeze. Hang on a sec. <coughs> <coughs> oh. 
Oh, pardon me. Yeah, so we might just stamp some bees. Wait, which way do the bees go up? Make sure I stamp them up the right way. Which way do they go? Oh, that way. Oh no, they're also they're sort of all over. They're flying in different directions, actually. So maybe we'll just stamp, we might just stamp some bees up there. Now, I haven't stamped these bees before, so I'm gonna test them on my grid paper first because I don't wanna muck them up on my um, piece that we've colored. I'm just stamping a few to get the feel for the stamp because they're small images. All right, so let's go. Um, yeah, I think like that. So we'll go there like that. Oh, that's cute. Do we want a swarm? Maybe I should do some more up there. Do we want more bees up there? I don't know. What do you think? More bees or just leave three bees? Not sure. I'll leave it at three for the moment. And we'll add the grass now for the our little friends here to sit on. Um, Rose says, I steam or boil them. They are not for baking. Oh, okay. It's only the Tasmanians that know about them. Oh, okay. Oh, there you go. So they're only for steaming or boiling those ones. So they don't bake up well. Interesting. Oh, there you go. I thought you could bake all potatoes, but goes to show how much I know <laughs> about potatoes. <laughs> Clearly not very much. Hmm. Oh, no worries. You enjoy your barbecue, Rose? Yeah, definitely come back and watch the the end, the replay of the end and see how it turned out. Thank you for joining us. Enjoy your yummy barbecue. <laughs> Yum, now I want a barbecue. But my hubby's going to be in a meeting tonight, so I don't even know what we're going to have for dinner tonight. We've got, what have we got in the fridge? We've got some mints. We've got some salmon. Oops. Oh. That was a bit too much glue, Mandy. Concentrate. We've got, what else did he buy? I don't know what else he bought. I don't think he got chicken because I asked him to get some chicken, but I think the chicken that I wanted, they didn't have when he went to the shops last night. I don't even know if my son's home for dinner tonight either. So usually I only do salmon if he's gonna be home because it's his favorite. So I don't know, I'll have to raid the fridge. Now it would depend on what time hubby's meeting finishes too. He might not even want much tonight for dinner. What's everyone else having for dinner? Inspire me with your, your meal plans. I get so bored with dinners, like, cause my boys, they're really fussy and they don't eat much. And Amber's vegetarian, so she normally gets her own anyway, cause she doesn't eat what we eat. So she cooks her own most of the time. Sometimes she'll have some of the veggies, like if I'm doing baked veggies or whatever, she'll have some of that. But um, the boys are so fussy. And so they don't like anything fancy. I was brought up eating just about anything except spicy stuff. Mum would make stews and curries and um, oh, all sorts of things. Baked, lots of baked dinners. My, my boys do like baked dinner. Um, but we don't buy legs of lamb very often, I have to say. And they don't like, they prefer lamb. If we're going to have a baked dinner, they don't like, um, beef so much. They only have beef if we're having like a, you know, like steak for barbecues. Um, but yeah. And so I really miss all the yummy, tasty things, but they're just so fussy, 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 fussy. My husband's always been fussy. His mother used to have a hard time feeding him when he was younger. And I've had the same experience with my son. He's taken after his father. <laughs> Although I have to say he's a lot better now. He's not as fussy as what he used to be when he was younger. He's gotten a lot better and he's keen to try new things now, which is good. But um, yeah. 
All right. Oh, that looks that looks really cute so far. Okay. Um, now we want some. Actually, let's put. Where's my? Where do my animals go? Oh, there they are. There they are. There they are. It's all right. Thought they'd run off on me. I even may have should have sat him behind the grass, but that's okay. He can sit there on the grass. Still could put another grass sort of in front of him, couldn't I? Yeah, he can just sit there on the grass today. All right, and then this little one. And then this one. And we're going to mount them up on dimensionals. All right, so we'll use some of those dimensionals again from the um, kits. So those really high dimensionals. Give them a bit of extra height today. Having their little party. I wonder what they're celebrating. Maybe they're celebrating a graduation too. Maybe they're celebrating a birthday or maybe they're celebrating the end of the year. Maybe they're celebrating the new year. Who knows? Celebrating something. And the bear is enjoying his honey. I enjoy my honey. I'm going to go and have a cup of tea after I finish filming with honey in it. There we go. Um, yeah, I like honey in my tea now. I don't have sugar in my tea anymore, except if I'm somewhere else and not at home, then I'll have hun I'll have sugar. But I prefer honey in my tea, and I like my flavored honeys. And I'm having my leatherwood honey at the moment. And I forget what the other one was that I bought. I think it was it macadamia honey, the other one I bought. I can't remember now. The two different ones that I bought. There we go. They look like they're having fun. Now this little birdie, I might put him flat and put him in the background there. Because he can look like he's sort of behind them. I could tuck him down a little bit. He could be sitting behind them. Yes, like that. So he'll go in there flat. And we're just going to add some leaves, I think, to, to the um, branch. There you go, little birdie. You're going to go in there and sit there with your friends. And you're looking at the balloon, aren't you? You're thinking you want to pop that balloon. You're thinking that looks like fun. You're going to bang the balloon and scare everybody. I think I'm just going to leave the three bees there. They're just a nice little touch, aren't they, those little bees? And then, so we're not doing the flowers. Um, and then we're going to add just some leaves. So I've got quite a lot of leaves here. We'll add some leaves to the branch here. Lots of lots of leaves here, which is lovely. So we've got lots to choose from. We've got some up here and here. Maybe they're going off the the top edge a bit, and then. Maybe some just there. Oh, it might be a bit too many. Yep. Try and just get these lined up to look right before we do a final stick. Maybe just have two 
two there like that. Be like that. How does that look? Might move these ones down a little bit. Yeah. Yep, I think that'll do. Have them there like that. Just have them sitting at different angles to sort of make it a little bit more, um, more, what's the word? Aesthetically pleasing to the eye. So it doesn't look sort of too uniform and, you know, we want it to look more artistic, I suppose. I won't say realistic because they don't look realistic because they're die cut leaves. <laughs> they're not real. And the critters aren't real. I've really enjoyed making this card, but I know it's taken a long time. But that's what happens, isn't it? When we're making a card, it doesn't always happen quickly, especially when we're doing something special. And um, when you're designing something from scratch too, it can take time, but it's always worth it. As I said before, it's always worth putting in the effort and the people that receive our handmade cards always appreciate them because they know that they've been handmade specially. Now I just might put, I think I'll put one more up there. That one can hang off a little bit because we're going to add it to the DSP and then to the card front. There we go. Okay. So we've got these extra little bits that we can use on another project. So we'll just move them off to the side, out of the way. There we go. Oh, that's turned out really cute. I'm very happy with that. All right. And then we've got this pretty DSP to put them on. That just frames it beautifully. Look at that, that's gorgeous. And then we've got to decide on a base, whether or not we put it on a just a white base or do we do a colored base? So let's see. This is the size of a white base. It's not an actual white base because it's got stamping on the other side. Just wondering, do I put it on that or do I put it on a color? That'll frame it better. I don't think I like it straight on the white. I think I prefer it. I think I'm going to prefer it on a color. <clears throat> now, what color should that be? Is the question. Um, maybe on balmy blue. Well, actually, let's have a look at what colors is in that DSP. Let's see, because that'll give us a little bit of an indication. We've got Calypso Coral, Garden Green, Mossy Meadow, Poppy Parade, Pretty Pink, and Wild Wheat. Um, hmm, wild Wheat might look nice, actually. Or we could do Mossy or Garden Green. Yeah. Let's grab those colors and see. There's the wild wheat. Actually, might look nice on that. Mossy and garden. Garden was the other one, wasn't it? Yeah, garden. Yeah. And garden, because we've got a lot of garden green here. So I don't know about putting it on garden, but it might be nice on. Oh, it might actually be really nice on that. All right, let's... So these are just half sheets of um, the coloured cardstocks that I've pulled out of my stash. So I'll score each of those in half, and then we'll see. So I'll score them in half at 10.5, so 10.5 centimetres. And then we'll fold them and see. Oh, do you know what I didn't do? I didn't add in any ribbon, but that's okay. Um, I don't think it needs it now anyway. But I did pull out some um, ribbon from the... It's a new ribbon that I got from the online exclusives as well. So I'll show you that too. Um, but 
we don't have any room really on our card now for ribbon but that's okay we won't use it today but i wanted to show you the ribbon anyway it's a really beautiful ribbon all right so i'm just using the edge here along the edge of my trimmer and the top edge there just to fold this and get it nice and square and then i'm burnishing that um, fold line with my um, bone folder just to give it a nice crisp fold helps the cardstock to sit down a little bit better as well okay there we go burnish okay all right so let's first of all try the should just give that another burnish let's try that first on the wild wheat that actually looks pretty good i like it on the wild wheat brings out the um the tones in the beehive doesn't it yeah i like that i actually quite like that on the wild wheat let's try it on the other colors too just to see so this is the Mossy Meadow. Oh, it looks good on that too. It's a bit hard to tell with all this ink. Let's put it over the top of the ink so you can't see that. Oh, it looks really nice on the Mossy Meadow as well. I like it on the Mossy. And let's try it also on the Garden Green. That might be a little bit too much Garden Green though because we've got a lot of other Garden Green on the card. With the grass and the um the leaves yeah i think that's a bit too much garden green i think i'm liking it on the mossy meadow the best just that different green isn't it could do it on balmy too but i don't know i think i like i don't know that one or this one Decisions, decisions. Hmm. What does everyone think? <laughs> I'm undecided. I like the um, wild wheat because it sort of brings out these tones and you've got the brown in the bear as well. What do you think? Wild wheat? Green? You like the green, Dimity? The mossy meadow? I did like the mossy meadow also. Just not the garden green. The garden green was, it's too much. Too much all of the same green. So that's on the mossy. Does look nice on the mossy meadow. In keeping with all of those greens it's just a different green tone i think it looks nice on that one too yeah we go that one nobody else is voting i'm going to go with that one then thanks dimity we use that one all right so we will put some um glue on the dsp because we've already got that cut and measured measured and cut What time do you have to go, Dimity, for your daughter, your granddaughter's um, graduation? All right, now I've got to make sure the flowers are up the right way because this is directional. In fact, this has this has got wild wheat colour flowers on here too. So it would have gone with the wild wheat also. I liked it on both. It was hard to decide. I think they both looked nice. There we go. Oh, 5.30 your time. Okay. How far behind us are you now that we're in daylight savings? So we are 6.30 right now, or 6.33. So what's the um, the current time difference? All right, so we'll put some glue on here. And we'll pop 
pop that down. You know what I didn't do? Sentiment. Didn't put a sentiment on there, did I? But that's okay, because it's a scene. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to use that sentiment um, on the inside. Oh, one and a half hours now. So we're ahead, one and a half hours ahead. Must be. It's always so tricky to with all those time differences, isn't it? Okay, that's really cute. Oh my goodness, that's so adorable. I love it. Now we don't have any bling on there. And we don't have a sentiment. So what I'm thinking is... One of these sentiments I'm going to put on the inside. I think I'm going to use this as a thank you card. So I think I'm going to put that on the inside. But there's no space on the outside. Um, not for... Not for, um, I was going to say, I wanted it to be a thank you card is what I was going to say, <laughs> or just because, but these sentiments are a little bit big. So I think what I'll do is I'll get a, um, an insert and I'll do an insert and I'll stamp that on the inside. But for the outside, we still need to get our bling. Oh, there it is. I was thinking, where's my bling? I had my bling out. Now, thinking what, what do we need for, in terms of bling on this card? I've got a lot of different bling. I've got two cases. So what will go with this? Maybe something plain. Ooh, speckled dots. Oh, I think they're not available anymore. The adhesive back speckled dots. I think they're all gone. I think those ones might be all gone, actually. <gasps> got butterflies, but we've got bees. Mm, maybe not butterflies and bees because it'll take away from the from the bees got those ones Could put a couple of little blue ones up in the sky they're not the right blue though are they they're a different blue Okay, none of those are going to be the right colours. Oh, unless we put some little sparkly. Nah, they're not going to go. Could probably even get away with not even having bling on this one, you know. Oh, did I even just say that? Oh my goodness, what is happening? How can we not have bling? Oh, we've got some little white... Got white and grey. Oh, we've got white and grey bling there. Maybe that. Pearls? No. Not pearls. No, they're too rustic. Or we just go back to our good old rhinestones, which just go with everything. Maybe some of the classic matte dots this time. I was thinking with the festive pearls, um, the blue ones would be all right in the sky but then we've also got the gold and the silver i've just used up all the gold on this sheet um but yeah i was thinking maybe the gold because we've got the gold um beehive like the yellow beehive and the honey i thought maybe the gold might go look like drips of honey she yeah let's do that let's try that with the gold See if that, we can make that look like little drips of honey. We can even maybe put a little gold one on the honey pot. Don't know. Decide it doesn't really look like drips of honey. I don't know. What do you think? I could put put a little gold one up in the corner. No, I don't think I'm liking them there. 
actually, I think I changed my mind. Let's just put some I don't even know. Yeah, I'll just leave it like that, I think. I don't know. I'm not I'm not certain about those blings, but I won't push them on too hard in case I change my mind and I want to take them back off. <laughs> oh, all right. So, I'm going to do the thank you on the inside. Um And do the thank you. Now, I haven't put the stickers on these ones yet. Oh, that's a big thank you. That's a very big thank you. It could be just because, couldn't it? Just because. Oh, maybe it should be a just because instead, because it's a bee, it's got the beehive. All right, I'm going to quickly do the sticker for this one. I'm going to show you how to do that. So I'm going to peel the sticker off. I'm going to peel the entire sticker and the backing off the sheet. Okay, this is an alternate way to do your stamps. Now this one, is it going to be the right length? Let's turn that over to a clean side. Oh, it's a little bit long actually. I might get the bigger block this one all right let's line that up put that down on the block okay then we're going to take off the backing paper from the sticker take off the backing paper from the back of your stamp each one of the the um, cling stamps comes with a backing paper now that is tacky so that will stick to the block on its own okay so you don't need to put the stickers it won't fall off but I like to have the stickers because then I can um, line it up now make sure you've got the text going up the right way okay and each of the stickers is a unique shape and it'll uniquely fit in with the shape of your stamp okay so this one is a bit more rounded on this end a bit more squared off on this end I'm gonna bring it right down near me where I can see it and then I'm gonna line the sticker up I've got to get my head right over it, so I'm just going to bring it right down below me. And then line the sticker up and push it down onto the back of the, the um, stamp. And then give it a good push. And then I like to peel up the bottom corner and the bottom right hand corner, I like to just dab it on my shirt. Can you just see I'm just dabbing it on my shirt sleeve? So that when I put that back on my block, which I'm going to make sure that I get this nice and straight now, use my grid paper. When I go to release my stamp later, I know that I can easily get it up off that corner because these stickers are really, really sticky. All right, now let's get, oh, I just put that on the ink. Let's get um, a white piece of cardstock for the inside and we'll make a quick um, insert. Just gonna cut this in half at 14.85. And in half again, so turn it around on the long side, cut it at 10.5, cut that again. And then I'm going to make a little two millimeter border. So it's gonna be cut at, 10, um, yeah, 10.1, 10.1 by 14.45, 14.4 and a smidge, not quite to the 14 and a half. There we go. Okay. Now we're going to stamp our sentiment and I think I might stamp it in the garden green. 
Now I haven't used this stamp before. When you've got long, oops, when you've got large stamps that are bigger than the ink pad, it is best to take the ink pad to the stamp rather than the stamp to the ink pad. And that way too, you can see if you've got an even coverage of the ink. Now this stamp is unique because they are, um, they're not distinctive, but they have sort of like those different shadings within them. So it looks like it's not fully inked, but it actually is. There we go. All right, so we're gonna stamp this on our um, insert. So I like to do that before I put it in there. So I'm gonna stamp it up a bit higher than halfway so that I've got room to write a little message there. Okay, we'll give that a clean. Ooh, bang. There we go. And then to tie it in with the, um, the scene on the front of the card, I'm just gonna do one last little thing, which I don't always do this, but I am today. I'm just going to blend a little bit of the balmy blue ink around the edges. You've got the garden green in the middle in the center with the sentiment and then we'll just have a little bit of balmy blue around the outside edges. Now I talked about earlier about not going over previous colored inks on your scrap paper when you're doing your blending brushes. You'll notice that I'm doing that a little bit now but the ink that's on the um, paper has now dried from earlier so it's not such of a concern at this point. I love crafting with all of my friends. Thank you all so much for being with me today and crafting with me or at least keeping me company and chatting with me while I'm crafting. It's the one chance through the week that I actually get to sit and craft because <laughs> most of the, the rest of the week, um, yeah, I'm at the computer doing computer work, doing paperwork, and uh, I don't get... I don't um, always get a lot of extra time for crafting, for fun anyway. Like, obviously, I have other projects I need to create for classes and for tutorials and things like that. But to just craft for the sake of crafting for fun, um, I don't often get a chance to do that. So I love being able to come and do that on a Monday and um, chat with all of you while I craft. Makes it so much more fun. There we go. Yeah, so that just adds a little bit of something to the inside. Now you could stamp an extra something something on the inside if you wanted to. Oh, we could even stamp some of those little flowers, couldn't we? Let's stamp some of those. Let's just make it even more special. Let's stamp these down the bottom here. They're cute. Look at that. Cute, cute, cute. I'll give that one a clean. Wow, I have got so much mess on my desk today. It's ridiculous. It's, it usually gets messy when I'm crafting, um, especially when I'm filming live, but today is just next level. <laughs> Today's crazy it's okay that's okay it'll get cleaned up okay now I'm going to um, quickly color in these flowers I'm just going to use the blends that I've got right here with me now um, oh I don't have any green out though do I let's grab a green what color green is that shaded spruce that's not the right color um, trying to find the colours that we've used on the front. Oh, that's old. Where's my garden? Is that garden? 
light mossy meadow. Mossy meadow will do because mossy is the colour that we have used um, on our mat. Sorry, our base, not our mat. There we go. And then our little flowers. What colour flowers should we have? Mm hmm. Red flowers. Just do little red flowers. I'll do little red. Um, oh, actually, you know what? We've got um, the flirty flamingo here. Why don't we do pink flowers? We'll do two pink flowers and we'll do a lighter one with the bubble bath. Because that's what we've already got here on our desk. There we go. Cute. All right, now we can stick that on the inside. I do prefer to use um, the stamp and seal or tear and tape for my inserts just because I don't like to see any bumpy glue bits if my glue doesn't um, smooth out nicely. You can use the um, spreader on the other end of your um, glue to make sure that it spreads out nicely and evenly, but I often forget to use it. There we go. So there's the front of our card. Isn't that just so cute? The little critters there. And then we've got the inside. Is that lovely? Really cute. I really enjoyed creating that. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm going to pop the uh, the camera back up to um, my face. Look at the lovely mess. You can tell that we've had a lovely time today by all of the, uh, the beautiful um, grid paper. <laughs> all right, here we go. I'm going to cover up this camera and tip it back up. Uh, let's see if I can cover up the camera. Where's the camera? There we go. Look at that. that covered up. All righty. So tip this back up. Adjust that back up. Oh, I better flip the cameras so we're not on the ceiling. And there we go. Oh, I almost am on the ceiling anyway. <laughs> I just saw there was a... A message there from Helen. Hi, Mandy. I had my phone sitting beside me so I can watch or glimpse while I have been sewing the faces on your Santa sacks. Oh, lovely. For your great nieces and nephews. They'll be filled with chocolates and lollies. Oh, that sounds amazing. That's fantastic, Helen. Um, you're normally at uh, card making on Monday afternoons at this time, aren't you? No card making now? Has it finished for the year? Normally you're ducking off to go to card making. <laughs> uh, oh, you like it, Dimity? Dimity said it's really, really is beautiful. There you go. So there's an up close. Isn't it just so cute? I love that designer series paper in the background. It just is really, really pretty. But how adorable are they? They're just so cute. My colouring did not look anywhere near as good as um, Patty Bennett's, but I think they still turned out pretty cute. So what do you think? Really adorable. Oh, your last one was last week, Helen. Ah, there you go. Yeah, because I thought it's it's not, uh, you're not normally here for the whole thing. But it's lovely to have you. I'm glad that you were here today. So there you go. So there's some ideas of using um, the fluffiest friends, which is super cute. And that was by popular demand. <laughs> Well, I did. I put out a poll and everybody voted uh, was between this one and the, what's the other one called? Soda cans, soda, I can't think what the other one's called, but it's like the soda cans or the, the um, as we call it, soft drink cans um, in the online exclusives. And um, the consensus was for Fluffiest Friends. So I thought, well, I'll buy that and demonstrate that one for everybody. And um, I think it turned out super cute. I look forward to doing some more projects with this one. This one was quite a detailed project. Um, I was thinking 
I knew that I wanted to do a scene. I knew it was going to take a lot of time, but I thought, you know what, I'm just going to do it because I second guessed myself and I thought, oh, maybe I should just do just a simple layout and just do just the bear like on there. And then I thought, no, go, go the whole hog, do a whole scene and include um, lots of the, the um, elements of the, um, the bundle. And um, yeah, I'm glad I did. So thank you all so much for your patience, but I hope that you found inspiration in that or at least even learnt some little tips and tricks um, or felt inspired. Oh, the ribbon. I was going to show the ribbon. Thank you, Dimity. Now, this is the ribbon. I haven't opened it yet, so I'm going to open it right now. It's Pecan Pie, um, what's it called? Center Stripe Ribbon. So it's, let me just open the, I'll just take the plastic off it. This is the one that I was planning on using but it didn't work with this um, scene card. Often when you do scene cards, ribbon is hard to work in because you know there's so much already going on on the project. But this is the ribbon here and oh, it's so soft. This is the first time I've had this one. So this is it here. And it's got the pecan pie stitched through the center of the very vanilla ribbon. And this is a very, very soft, you can always tell how a ribbon, um, if a ribbon is soft or not by how it hangs off your finger like this is this is how i tell if you if you see it hang down like that you know that it's a soft ribbon if it's a stiff ribbon it sort of sits out more sort of straight but um yeah this is a really really soft ribbon let's tie a bow this is the one that i wanted to use but it just didn't work that's okay i'll have to use it on another project oh it ties really nice bows look at that Has a beautiful bow. Isn't that gorgeous? Can you see that? Very pretty. So that's the that's the ribbon that's in the online exclusive. Well, I think there's a couple of different ribbons in there, but that's that's where you'll find it in the online exclusive. So look out for that. If you're looking for a nice soft ribbon, it's um, very vanilla, and it will go with a lot of things. So the pecan pie strip that's through the center, it's almost like. Um, it's actually almost like crumb cake. It's it's not a heavy colour. It's a very neutral sort of colour. Yeah, really nice. So, yeah, thanks for reminding me, Dimity. That was the one I was going to use. Does anybody have any of that already? Oh, you don't have that one, Dimity? It's really lovely. I think that'll go with so many projects. Just having a look at it on here. Yeah, there's absolutely nowhere where I could fit it on there and have it look decent but i don't want to take away from the cute little scene anyway it's so cute <laughs> it's just so cute so there you go all right well i will let you go i've kept you well and truly long enough and um thank you for joining it was like a like a whole class just for one card today wasn't it <laughs> but i hope you learned some things today um or even picked up on you know, a few little bits and pieces. But thank you all for joining me. Um, if there's anything I can do to help you, then please get in contact with me. Remember, if you are looking for the new catalogs, um, if you'd like a copy of the new mini catalog and the celebration brochure, and you don't already have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator here in Australia, then please let me know. Um, and I'd love to get one of those out to you. But until next week, I will just say happy crafting, everyone. See you soon. Bye.